So as a first problem, let us work out this. You have to show that the scalar product of P and X is equal to E to the power minus I by H cross P X. I think in the lecture class, uh, I put a plus sign here uh, instead of minus. I put, I put plus, but it should be minus. Okay, so let us uh, solve it. Uh, let me show you, you the this particular relation in fact if you recall that we have encountered this when we expanded the state vector uh, psi of t k psi of t in the continuous basis and we wrote it like this say in the position space basis we can express the state vector psi of t as this and uh, because this is just a number and this is the so-called wave function in the or probability amplitude this i can write as psi of x of t this guy and then i have this skate x and dx right similarly if you recall in the momentum basis i can express this state vector psi of t as integration dp the momentum wave function psi tilde of pt p okay now here psi tilde of pt is the momentum wave function or probability amplitude in the momentum space now there is a connection between this wave function momentum wave function and the position with wave, wave function and that connection we can establish and while we do that let me show you let me write psi tilde of pt is equal to p of psi of t and i can write it as this i can always put the identity here dx x x psi of t and this i can write as uh, integration dx p of x and i have psi of xt this is the quantity now we have to evaluate or we have to find out to, so to do that to do that let me write the eigenvalue equation in the momentum uh, for the position uh, operator so the eigenvalue equation for the position operator is this in the position basis this is what you have and also we know this commutation relation between the position operator and the momentum operator xp is equal to i h cross right this is the so-called uncertainty relation now let me do one thing let me uh, from both sides let me take the inner products uh, in fact let me multiply this expression on the left by x dash and on the right by x double dash then i am going to have i h cross x this x double this and this i can write as x this x p x double this minus x this p x this is basically i'm expanding the commutation relation here and on the right hand side i have i s cross this quantity is the kronecker uh, dirac delta that is delta x this minus x double this okay now you know uh, using the eigenvalue equation i can write it as the if this operates on this then it will pop up x this so therefore if the position operator x this operate on the bra uh, kit uh, bra x this then i will get x this so and i'll be left out with x this 
p x double dash this is what i get here okay minus uh, similarly i will have from here if this x dash operator position operator operate on the gate x double dash i will get x double dash and i have here x dash p x double dash and on the right hand side i am already having i s cross delta x dash minus x double dash and from here i can write x dash minus x double dash i can take it this side and uh, this would be my common expression x dash p x double dash is equal to i s cross delta x dash minus x double dash all right so this is an important expression here i have now i can apply some property of the dirac delta function one identity related to dirac delta function you can look at any mathematical physics book or any engineering mathematics book you will get this identity x d of dx delta x is equal to minus delta x if i use this uh, uh, expression identity and apply it here then i can write i s cross delta x dash minus x double dash i can write it as minus i s cross just i'm applying the identity this identity i'm applying here so i will get i s cross x dash minus x double dash delta delta x dash minus x double dash delta x dash minus x double dash this is what i will get and from here i will get minus i s cross x dash minus x double dash delta of delta x dash delta of x dash minus x double dash here you see i am now not uh, you know this is discarded because this is basically a constant or it's a fixed uh, point just like if you remember the dirac delta function it has this structure delta x minus a right where a is a fixed point and x is the variable so here here this x is the variable quantity here x this so therefore that's why i can write it in this form so utilizing this uh, expression uh, here i can now write uh, as minus i s cross x dash minus x double dash delta of delta x dash minus x double dash delta of x dash is equal to on the right hand side i will have x minus x double dash x dash minus x double dash and i have here x dash p x double dash okay so this implies i can write x dash p x double dash is equal to minus i h cross delta x dash delta of x dash minus x double dash so this is a very important result we have and similarly we can you can actually show that you will get another expression related in the momentum basis that would be p dash x dash p double dash is equal to plus i s cross delta p dash delta p dash minus p double dash so these two expressions are now going to be useful in uh, proving our result so let me once again go back to the eigenvalue equation x dash is equal to x operator position operator operating on the kth x is equal to x x is a number here and this we have a kth x right so let me multiply both sides by this bra p so i have this is what i will have and here x is a number so i will have this guy now uh, let me use the identity uh, here i can just use uh, see how i do it let me put this identity dp dash let me put here and p x operator then let me send do is this p this p 
be this that's the identity i have put here and then i am here x and this is equal to x the right hand side is left untouched i have used the identity only on the left hand side and from here i can write dp this and this expression i already know this is what i have so if i use this here i will get i h cross i h cross delta p this okay uh, in fact because i have here this p not p this so this would be p here okay delta p delta p minus p this p this x is equal to x p of x okay this i can further write as i h cross delta p because p this is the variable here so i can take this integration inside and i have delta p minus p this p this x is equal to x p of x so from here i get this differential equation uh, applying the property of the dirac delta function i have i h cross delta p p x i have applied the property of the dirac delta function right this is going to give me simply p x so this would be equal to x p x so this differential equation you can easily uh, solve and you will simply get p x x would be equal to e to the power i by h cross p x so this is what we were asked to prove and similarly you can prove that x p would be equal to e to the power it would be some factor may be there but it would be overall proportional to e to the power minus i by h cross p x so this is how you can prove these relations okay now let us work out this problem suppose two speed hub particles a and b are in the singlet configuration let sa be the component of the spin angular momentum for particle of particle a in the direction defined by the unit vector a similarly let sb be the component of b's angular momentum in the direction b you have to show that the product of the spins for both particle a and b uh, is given by this expression minus h cross square h cross square by 4 cos theta where theta is the angle between a and b this is an important problem and useful in the context of Bell's inequality that we have discussed in the class and this is completely a quantum mechanical result so let us uh, show this prove it that this is uh, what it is so basically what we are having is a suppose my z direction is along this and x direction is along this direction let me assume that my the detector direction a is along z and the detector direction uh, the other direction it is along this direction b is in the xz plane and it is directed along this and the angle between a and b is theta okay so in that case i will have this spin direction you see s a for the particle a capital a it is because a i am taking along z direction small a so it would be s z a for particle a and for the particle b i have for particle capital b this this its detector direction uh, is along direction small b and which is lying in the x z plane so i can write it as cos theta s z b i think it is easily understandable and the other one would be sine theta s x b right so this is what i have and now our goal is to calculate the expectation value of the product of the spin operators s a and s b 
and we have to calculate the products with respect to the singlet state and let me denote the singlet state by 0 0 k 0 0 where this k 0 0 as it is given as 1 by root 2 up spin a is in the up state then b is in the down state because the total angular momentum has to be zero that's why it is zero zero state or if spin of a particle a is in the down direction the spin of the particle b has to be in the up direction this is basically an entangled state so to work it out first let us calculate s a a s b b first let us work it out okay to work that out let me uh, already i have taken a to be along z direction so let me write it like this and s b is cos theta s z b plus sin theta s z b uh, s x b okay s x b and this is operating on k 0 0 which is 1 by root 2 up a down b minus down a up b okay so this is what i have now uh, before i proceed further we need to note that in the sz representation or in the basis of the sz operator i have this results you can just consult any quantum mechanics book in the sz representation if the sz operator operates on the up spin then you will get h cross by 2 this eigenvalue equation you will get if it operates on the down spin you are going to get minus h cross by 2 down and if sx operates on the up spin it basically flips the spin and it is going to make it down and if sx operates on the down spin and it is going to flip it and it will make it in the up state okay so this is what you have to utilize it and this is very easy to prove these relations just you have to note that up spin is we can represent it by this column vector and the down spin is represented by this column vector 0 1 and as z in the matrix representation it would be 1 0 0 minus 1 and sx is equal to uh, 0 1 1 0 so if you can if you utilize this uh, matrix representation then you can easily uh, verify that these results that i have written here is correct so please do that if you are not convinced now utilizing this i can work out uh, my expression here uh, so first let me work it out so i have s z a cos theta s z b plus sin theta s x b and it is going to operate on 1 by root 2 uh, up a spin up a spin down b minus down spin a and up spin b now as as that a operates on only the spin component having this part or this part and similarly as that b operates on the spin component referring to the b part only on the kit referring to that is denoted by this b so if i open it up and i urge you to do that if you do this finally what you are going to get let me write it down it's very simple to uh, do that you will get h cross square by 4 cos theta uh, let me write it more clearly you will get h cross square by 4 cos theta 1 by root 2 uh, down a up b minus up a down b which is basically this expression if you can see this is nothing but the opposite of this singlet state k 0 0 right 
anyway this is equal to this and you have another part also that would be h cross square by 4 sin theta 1 by root 2 you will have up a up b plus down a and down b all right this is obviously not equal to k 0 0 it is something else it is orthogonal to k 0 0 so therefore if i now take uh, the inner product with k 0 0 s a a s b b k 0 0 this is already i have this is my k 0 0 right so because of the orthogonality and this guy is orthogonal to k 0 0 so this will land up me in and this is minus is there so minus s cross square by 4 cos theta okay this whole thing is k 0 0 uh, with a minus sign so therefore minus s cross square by 4 cos theta is what i am going to get and hence the relation i am able to prove it this is a quantum mechanical result okay this we have discussed in the context of bell's inequality as i have already told you let us now work out this problem you have to find the smith form of the state k psi is equal to 1 by root 3 k 0 0 plus k 0 1 plus k 1 0 let us do it as you know i can express this particular k k psi in this form as well say summation over i j its coefficient c i j phi a i direct product with phi b j and here the first k refers to system or particle a the second k refers to particle b and so on here 0 refers to a this one refers to b here this refers to a this refers to b so i if i just open it up let i will what i will get is this and uh, okay let me write here c11 would be phi a1 direct product with phi b1 and this phi a1 as you get phi a1 is as you can see it is k0 and phi b1 as you can see it is k0 and you will get other expression like this c12 that would be phi a1 direct product with phi b2 and again you see phi a1 is k0 phi b2 is k1 and you will get c21 would be phi a2 direct product with phi b1 and phi a2 is k1 phi b1 is k0 i hope you can see it and the other terms would be phi set uh, c22 let me write this also c22 would be phi you know it would be uh, it would be a2 direct product with phi uh, b2 but already c22 is is going to be 0 because there is no phi a2 that is not there right phi a2 is 0 uh, this is not there it is null and similarly phi b2 is it is though it is there but because phi a2 is uh, is a null uh, vector null state so therefore c22 would be equal to zero and utilizing this i can now write the c matrix c matrix would be if you look at this gate here from this you can make out that the c matrix would be one by root three one 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 zero so it's a square matrix and as you can see it is easily diagonalizable so therefore 
the singular value decomposition here boils down to getting the eigen decomposition only so c i can write it as the v vector and this diagonal matrix sigma uh, lambda and then i have v dagger or i can just say this is nothing but in singular value decomposition this is going to be my sigma so first let me diagonalize this matrix and to that let me find out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix c so eigenvalues eigenvalues of this matrix c to do that i just have to uh, find out the characteristic equation that would be 1 by root 3 1 minus lambda 1 1 minus lambda is equal to 0 and if i do that this is going to give me the equation lambda square minus 1 by root 3 lambda minus 1 by 3 is equal to 0 and this is going to give me the eigenvalues lambda 1 would be equal to 1 by 2 root 3 1 plus root 5 and lambda 2 would be equal to 1 by 2 root 3 1 minus root 5 so these are my eigenvalues okay and what about the corresponding eigenvectors the normalized eigenvectors and it's very trivial to work it out anybody knowing uh, can work it out the normalized eigenvectors normalized eigenvectors corresponding to corresponding to lambda 1 and lambda 2 you please work it out it's very trivial you will get for lambda 1 it would be v1 is equal to 1 by square root of 10 plus 2 root 5 and here i will have one first row 1 plus root 5 and in the second row i have 1 and v2 would be equal to 1 by this is the eigenvector corresponding to lambda 2 that would be 10 plus 2 root 5 and here you will have 1 minus 1 plus root 5 so these are the eigenvectors so therefore this v uh, vector that it be formed by this v1 and v2 okay and if i can write it let me just write the whole expression whole v vector in the matrix form that would be 10 plus 2 square root of 5 and the elements here would be diagonal would be 1 plus root 5 1 1 minus 1 plus root 5 so this is my v vector and as you can see immediately that v dagger is actually going to be the same with v okay and this diagonal matrix which is lambda basically i can also denote it by sigma uh, as that is what i have used in singular value decomposition this would be sigma would be equal to 1 by 2 root 3 1 plus square root of 5 0 0 1 minus square root of 5 okay so this is what i am going to have and now what about the smith uh, decomposition or the, that form so as we have seen in the lecture class we can write this k psi in the smith form as follows we are going to have k is, is equal to 1 to r lambda k u a k direct product with v b k okay and what about uh, r here in this particular problem here as you can see r is going to be equal to 2 why because there are uh, two non-zero elements in the diagonal matrix in the sigma matrix as you can see here there are two non-zero elements in sigma so therefore r is equal to 2 and what about the coefficient lambda so there is going to be two coefficients lambda 1 and lambda 2 so let us not mix that with the so-called uh, eigenvalue uh, here this is uh, i'm talking about the coefficient smith coefficient and you can easily make it out that this is going to be equal to lambda 1 would be equal to 1 plus root 5 
divided by 2 root 3 this is you can get it from the sigma matrix here and lambda 2 is equal to 1 minus root 5 2 root 3 and also you can verify if you see uh, you can easily find that lambda 1 square plus lambda 2 square is equal to 1 which is one of the co condition that this meet coefficient has to satisfy as you know lambda k square should be equal to sum of lambdas should be equal to uh, square of lambda should be equal to 1 so using utilizing all this information that we are having now let me just write down what is this k u a k which is i can write it as i is equal to 1 to 2 u i k phi a i right and uh, we also have v b k is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to 2 v i k phi b i now you notice that u i k and v i k these are basically the matrix element of the matrix capital u and capital v and here capital u is nothing but the capital v and which we have already worked out and that was v is equal to 1 by square root of 10 plus 2 root 5 this we have worked out and the elements were 1 plus root 5 1 1 minus 1 plus root 5 so is the for capital u so therefore i can now work out u a1 for example this u a1 small u a1 is going to be formed by this v1 v2 which is equal to if i just uh, open it up i am going to have it as e11 k0 you please uh, have to verify it very patiently it's very straightforward u21 k1 and e11 here is the this matrix element uh, multiplied by this also of course and u21 is this one right similarly uh, for u12 and u22 and u a2 also you can find out u a2 is uh, again this would be given by this smith vector v1 v2 and in fact this can be written in this form that would be u1 to k0 plus u2 to k1 and similarly you can find out what is your v b1 this would be the smith vector it will be given by this smith vector only so it would be v11 k0 plus v21 k1 and vb2 would be equal to uh, in matrix form this is what you will have and if you write it in the this uh, decomposition or in this form in superposition form you can write it as v12 k0 plus v22 get one okay that's how you can work out this particular problem now let us work out this final problem derive the ch ss inequality from bell's inequality this actually i have promised you to do in the problem solving class so let me do it so to do that let me write down the bell's inequality that we have derived in the lecture class and it was as follows it was the expectation value of or the average of uh, the product of the spin measurements here measurements when the given set of detectors are oriented along a and b so that's what p a b refers to it again let me reiterate that p a b refers to the average or expectation value of the product of the measurements and here by measurement i am uh, referring to speed measurements when the given set of detectors are oriented along a and b minus p a c similar meaning to p a b that modulus is less than or equal to one plus p b c right this is what we have derived 
now the so called this is bell's inequality and the ch ss inequality is pab minus p ac modulus is less than or equal to 2 plus minus p a dash c plus p a dash b okay so this is what uh, we have as chss inequality so let us now derive it to do that let us say uh, a dash and b dash are two more directions are two more directions along which spins can be measured along which spin can be measured can be measured so basically we are introducing two other detector directions now you have to recall that p a b we wrote it like this we have written it as the density function rho lambda that is the density of the hidden variables a a is associated with the measurement corresponding to system a or particle a a b b lambda d lambda this is what we had and also from here i can write rho lambda minus of rho lambda a a lambda a now you see b i am replacing b i am replacing by a that's why this minus sign is coming up and we have already discussed it in the lecture class so please refer to that so this is what i'm going to get then utilizing this i can write p a b this is simple algebra so you just have to work it out p a b this and this would be equal to utilizing this uh, this expression here this uh, or actually let me say specifically i'm going to use this expression if i utilize this expression i can get minus d lambda rho lambda a capital a a lambda a b lambda minus a a lambda a b dash lambda okay this is what i'll get and in the similar way that we have done in the lecture class if you follow similar steps it is very straightforward to work it out i'm not going to do it here because that would be repetition of the class actually so if you can do that in the similar way uh, just look at the lecture class you will get d d lambda rho lambda i'm giving you the procedure only a a lambda a b lambda and here i will have i'm t i'm going to take that common then i will get one plus minus a a dash lambda a uh, b dash lambda this is what i will have okay uh, of course there is another term is also there that is minus d lambda rho lambda a a lambda a b dash lambda and i have here one plus minus a a this lambda a b lambda okay so this is what i'm going to have and now you see the bell assumed that a and b uh, could have this capital a and capital b let me write about bell's assumption bell john bell assume that a and capital a the measurement basically a and b could be one of the 
three values three values and that's pretty straightforward to understand one value is zero if that is the case when if no particle is measured no particle is measured then you are going to obviously get zero value or you are going to get either spin uh, down or minus one or spin up that is plus one in the unit of s cross by two that means this implies that i can have a is less than or equal to one and b can be less than or equal to one so utilizing this uh, this information this particular information i can write modulus of p a b minus p a b dash that would be less than or equal to integration d lambda rho lambda one plus minus a a dash lambda a b dash lambda this is one expression one part and another part is integration d lambda rho lambda 1 plus minus a a dash lambda a b lambda okay and this is actually equivalent to from here i can write this is equivalent to because uh, you know that d lambda rho lambda is equal to 1 so utilizing this i can write it as 2 plus minus and this would be p a this b this plus p a this b okay so this is the so-called bell's inequality i have so let me write again this implies that i am having modulus of p uh, this is actually chss inequality that is what we wanted to prove this would be modulus of p a b minus p a b dash is less than or equal to 2 plus minus sum of p a dash b dash plus p a dash b okay and this can be written in a different form l also it can be rewritten you can verify it it can be rewritten in an another form and that is this minus 2 less than or equal to s a quantity we define as s lambda a a this b b this less than or equal to Two, and where this quantity called s lambda a a dash b b dash is defined as p a b it's very straightforward to very simple to verify it you please do it yourself it's simple a b dash plus it's algebra a dash b plus p a this b this okay now actually this is an important inequality chss inequality which is nothing but bell's inequality it's a only a different form and based on this inequality uh, a similar kind of chss inequality was uh, proposed by closer uh, and his research group uh, based on it they made an experimental proposal and later on elaine aspect uh, did the experiment as you know closer and uh, elaine aspect uh, are uh, two of the three guys who got the 2022 physics nobel prize for their work on quantum entanglement mm -hmm.